Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. Today is Monday and that means review time on my channel and I'm reviewing Of Bone and Thunder by Chris Evans. Of Bone and Thunder is a multi point of view military fantasy and the unique thing about it is the Vietnam War inspired setting. In Chris Evans' world we have the dominant force of the kingdom and the kingdom conquered Lutox and Lutox is inhabited by, I, I don't really know, it's kind of fairy creatures, maybe goblins, for me they look a bit like, like goblins, uh, but they are only referred to as slits, um, yeah, it's kind of a demeaning term by the soldiers that, uh, that fight there. And the slits inhabit, um, yeah, a kind of a large jungle area, and there is an, a kind of uprising, and therefore human soldiers and dwarves from the kingdom are sent there to stump down this uprising. The book consists of a bunch of POVs, but only four of them are really main characters, and the first one would be John Rathim. John is a town, which is the term for mage or wizard in this world, and he is very idealistic, he's kind of the new recruit, and we meet him right in the beginning when he is flown in by dragon um, to, the, yeah, to the war zone, and he's very naive in all his um, yeah, believes in the ideology of the of the kingdom and yeah has to meet reality there. Then we are following um, a yeah kind of squad or unit which is called a shield. There it's about like forty soldiers and they have like a shield leader, a lead crossbowman, and then various grunts. And um, on the Ground level, we are following Carney, and Carney is a soldier that doesn't really live up to his potential and tries to deal with the reality mostly by taking drugs and chewing everything that gives him some kind of psychedelic kick. Um, the second um, member of the shield we are following is the lead crossbowman, Listok, and Listok has to deal, of course, with all the stupidities his soldiers do and try to keep them in line and also live with the craziness of the shield leader who's not really, yeah, the most accessible person, let's call him that. Um, and the last perspective we're seeing is Wally, and Wally is a flock commander. Um, a flock commander, yeah, is um, a chief of the of the air force, because um, the military there uh, in, in the kingdom uses dragons, and uh, there are various kind of dragons. There are like small dragons who are used for fire breathing, for example, um, but. He um, is the commander of, I think, Onyx Brigade, and Onyx Brigade are very large black dragons, and they are mostly used for transport and transporting troops into battle or to get them out, a bit like the helicopters were in the Vietnam War. And therefore, the um, during the story, the path of the unit of the shield and of the flock often cross because the uh, onyx squad often flies red shield out of um, danger or brings them to their missions. Um, the book is divided in three parts and each part tells more or less one event of the war. There is of course like a character arc for each of the characters and there is uh, an overall plot arc, but it's not um, like a really strong plot-driven novel. The, each part is an event of its own and it's more connected by having the same characters and yeah, everyone has, has a slight own character narrative there. So overall, as plot and characters are very solid and good, not great or mind-blowing, the yeah do-or-die element of the book and if you will enjoy it or not is in the setting. The setting, um, this yeah Vietnam-style-like jungle setting is very very unique for a fantasy 
and the um, yeah, similarities to the actual Vietnam War are quite stunning and, and really, really yeah, researched uh, very well or detail oriented. I, I like to give you like two examples. Um, one uh, might be that, of course, in the uh, time of the Vietnam War, you had still a lot of racial issues between African American soldiers and white soldiers. And this is reflected in the book as well, because the kingdom mainly consists of humans and um, they had dwarfs enslaved to work for them. So the term for dwarfs is still like mules, because they were yeah, forced into manual labor for the humans. But the dwarfs were recently set free and are no slaves anymore, but also uh, yeah, citizens of the kingdom. And you can see this kind of tension between them that of course still exists because the dwarves still have a grudge for being enslaved uh, for so long and there are also human soldiers that still kind of treat them like dwarves. So the dwarves are often, yeah, uh, kept together in, uh, uh, in in one group and don't trust the other soldiers and vice versa. So um, this kind of racial tension, what was also in the Vietnam War, we're seeing here as well. Um, a second thing might be, uh, uh, even if it's if it's tiny, we get like one or two chapters in the in the last part from the perspective of a town crier which is flown in from the kingdom to actually yeah uh, correspond um, from the uh, from the front line so get expressions get flown uh, flown back into the kingdom and then be in town and cry about or shout about what's happening there so there is this twist of having um, embedded journalists um, in the war zone uh, which is also some, something the Vietnam War is very uh, popular for or known for. So um, there are a lot of these similarities and especially if you're a fan maybe of the Vietnam War or just interested in, in this, uh, like figuring this out and seeing how much love uh, in, and detail went into it is yeah one of the main reasons to, to enjoy the book. For me this kind of scenario worked out really really well and was refreshing and in the end I enjoyed the book a lot and uh, rated it 4 stars. So that's it for this review today. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. If you want to know what's coming up on my channel, please look inside the description box. There's a little segment there called On the Horizon. I wish you a good day and hope you get bitten by a really good book too. Bye.